Well, hello there, everyone. Well, it's finally Friday, January the 6th year, 2022. And I say finally, it's been one of those weeks and my pool out there is filling up with water ever so slowly. It's still filling up the deep end to transition to the shallow end, meaning it's probably at the deepest section, maybe this deep right now. It'll probably take till tomorrow to get filled up. And then comes the joy of balancing the chemicals out inside there. Anyway, I'll make you a video once it's all done and all, it's all, all balanced. So it might be sometime in a couple days. We shall see. And I got to do it when it's still shade out there, not sun. Anyway, as I said, it's Friday, January the 6th, 2022. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about setting resolutions versus setting goals. Okay? Because what do people do on New Year's Eve? They get New Year's Eve resolutions. Okay? So anyway, I'm Maskey Finance. I'm coming to you from South Florida with a swimming pool and a dock and a tiki hut. <laughs> okay. And something I am not. I am not a financial advisor. I'm not a CPA. I'm not an attorney. Nothing like that. I'm just a guy who voices his thoughts, opinions, dreams. Uh, talks maybe about some successes, but talks a lot about his failures too. And I talk, I try to talk a lot about how I can help you all. You. All of you. You. <laughs> I want to help you all become wealthy. Because so many Americans struggle. They live paycheck to paycheck. And time's getting tighter. And I want to hopefully motivate you all. Not that I can't help all of you. I want to motivate all of you and give you some basic education to help you to become wealthy. Okay? And let's start with this. Setting New Year's resolutions, setting goals. The majority of folks who set, make re New Year's resolutions, they don't pan out. They don't play out. They might make a resolution to quit smoking this year or to quit drinking or to lose 20 pounds or to get in better, better physical shape or to run a marathon. But then so many of them, folks who make those, by the time January's done, it's over. I'm going to give you an example, a real life example. I used to work out and work in a YMCA. I worked out there for 10, 12, 15 years before I started working part time. Okay. And I would go, I'd work a lot of times what I would do is, in my police work, I'd work out every day at work on my lunch break. We had a mandatory hour lunch break. I'd go into our fitness room and I'd work out all four days. And I'd be off for a period of time, then I was off Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I worked 14 hour days off Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I would work out the YMCA. Um, there's other times I was working out sporadic days during the week at the Y because I was working maybe daytime, nighttime in the police department, okay? But what I saw consistently, and some of the guys that we were all consistent, I lifted weights a lot back then. And I did used to get the comments about, man, for such a small guy, you sure are strong. And I was like, no, I'm not. You guys can bench more than me. You can squat more than me. And they're like, look at you, though. How much do you weigh? And I would tell them whatever I weighed then. And they'd say, but the amount of weight you're, you're doing, you're pressing or you're squatting is more than what you weigh. And I was like, but I've seen you benching 225. And they're like, yeah, but I weigh 275. And you're benching more than your weight. I understand now. <laughs> okay, I understand. All right. So anyway, resolutions versus goals. What we'd see in the YMCA so many times is that come January, membership would go up. People would come in. They'd sign up. It was a big month. Big month. And the amount of people working out. It'd be crowded. So many people are working out. And by February, the numbers of people working out was starting to drop. And by March, it was back to how it always was. <laughs> and year after year after year after year after year. <laughs> it never changed. Now, over the years, membership did grow because the population was growing. But it was just funny because what was happening... People were setting resolutions to go work out and get physically fit. And as January wore on and February came, it was that grind of, huh, they can't, they just can't stick it out. Let's compare that with setting goals. All right. If someone writes down on a piece of paper, got a piece of paper, you write it down, that um, I want to become physically fit. That's their goal. That's not a good goal. When you set a goal, 
And I, I talk more about financial goals, but it's with any goal. When you set a goal, you need to outline the steps to complete that goal. All right. I've referenced many times in my videos how I wrote down a two-year plan to get moved down here to South Florida from Virginia. I had been to South Florida. I had seen what houses cost. I saw, I knew I couldn't afford it. <laughs> but how could I do it? I wrote down a two-year plan. I wrote down where I was. And I calculated up where I needed to be in order to do this. And then I had to figure out the steps to get there. And at first I was like, I couldn't do it. I didn't know how to figure it out. I didn't know, but it took me a day or two and a little light bulb went off. And I figured out how I could accomplish it. And by golly, it worked. And it didn't take me two years. It took me 11 months. Sorry if I clapped my hands. Okay, it took me 11 months to do it. And I was planning two years, okay? So when you write down a goal, that's why you don't make these big astronomical goals. You can, but make smaller goals and figure out the steps to get to those small goals. If you want to buy your first rental house, just your first, there's a couple things you got to do. You can't just say, I want to get my first house in 2023 and you get your first house. Okay. A couple things. You need to save up a down payment right? If you're an investor, normally you got to put 20% down, sometimes 25% down. We're not going to talk about partners or they're buying the house with no money or nothing like that. It's the average investor. You got to get 20 to 25% down. Okay, that's number one. That means you got to save some cash up. Number two, what market are you going to buy in? Are you buying where you live at? Or are you buying somewhere else? If you are buying wherever you're buying at, what do houses cost? What is the price of a good rental house? How do you figure that out? Well, you need to educate yourself because here's a quick snapshot of how you do that. If you know what a house costs, let's just say it's $100,000, and I'm doing this off the top of my head, you put 20% down, so you owe, get a mortgage of $80,000. So when you get that mortgage of $80,000, you got to look at what that house could potentially rent for in whatever the neighborhood is where it's located. You can call up property managers. You can call up landlords who are have advertising houses for rent. You can look at houses for rent and see what is the market rent, okay? And whatever that rent is, you know your mortgage is $80,000. Contact a lender. Find out how you get pre-qualified and ask them something like, if I was to get a mortgage today, Based on my credit score, if I have my 20%, what would be my mortgage rate? What would be my monthly payment, principal and interest? Okay. They can do it for you. You can do it yourself with an online mortgage calculator. Just Google online mortgage calculator. Okay. You can do it yourself. Get your principal and interest. You need to figure out taxes and insurance then. It's taxes, you can normally look up on the website for the jurisdiction, the area. Figure out what the current taxes are. All right. Insurance, you might have to call an insurance company and ask them what would they char uh, charge you or ask another investor maybe what they pay or whatever. There's ways to figure things out. And then you got to look at holding money out for vacancies, repairs, and capital expenditures and just say it's roughly 20% that you hold out. All right. Then do you need to pay a property manager? Do you pay them 10%? Okay. So, and so is there anything else you need to pay? All right. So you know this, what's involved then, but then you look at all right, if my rent is X number of dollars and my mortgage is here, but when I hold it, when I pay tax insurance, it's here. And when I pay property manager, it goes up a little more. And when I hold 20% out for vacancies, repairs, and capital expenditures, this is what I, I need to allocate for each month for my bills. Do I have any extra? How much cash do I have extra? Because if you don't have anything extra, you're buying an alligator. Don't buy an alligator. All right. You want to buy something that gives you positive cash flow because you, if you're spending more money each month, you're going in the red or the black, whatever you're going negative. That's not good. All right. You got to make a profit each month and you can figure up your cash from cash yield. I'm not going to talk to you about how to calculate that. You can figure up your, inter your IRR, your rate of return. You can figure out how many dollars are you getting for positive cash flow. And for a $100,000 house, I'd say roughly $250 a month positive cash flow is what I want. Okay. But you see what I did there? Just for a goal of buying a rental house, you got to figure out all that various stuff. 
and we get back to how do you save up the down payment? I'll put the link below one more time for Wealthfront. There's only two of you that have done it so far. All of you should do this unless you're getting a higher rate already. Are you getting 4.3% on your savings or higher? If you are, please post below in the comment which where you're getting a higher rate at because I'm not finding higher savings account rates. You might get a higher CD rate, but if you're trying to save your money and you might need to spend it six months of down payment, you don't want to lock it up per se. It needs to be in a savings account. My link below, you can sign up and get 4.3% on your savings account. That's probably better than what you currently have on your savings. I don't care if you have $50 or if you have $50,000. If you got it in the bank and you're getting less than 4.3%, you need to sign up for Wealthfront and get that 4.3%. Make that a goal. <laughs> All right, make that a goal. And while you're at it, save a couple cents on uh, gas using the Upside app. I'll put it all below. All right. So with that being said, setting resolutions, setting goals. I encourage you to set goals. All right. Resolutions are fine. You're at a New Year's Eve party. You're with family. You're with friends. You set your New Year's resolution. But if, but if it's a true resolution, sit down and figure out the steps. Make it your goal. And then accomplish it. Accomplish it. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to go out there and peek at the pool here in just a minute. Have a safe day. Love life. Stay warm wherever you're at because I'm warm down here. And with that being said, Maskies signing out.